Hello guys, I'm Alej Pujadas. I am currently living in Munich. I was born in Girona, it's a small town in the north of Barcelona in Catalonia, Spain. I co-founded an NGO called Health As Nepal together with my friend Mark. Unfortunately, he cannot uh, be in these videos, but uh, he's, he delegated the task to me. Please tell us what Health As Nepal is. Health As Nepal is an, a very small NGO, which aim is basically to provide health assistance, healthcare overall, in one of the remotest regions in the world, which is in Nepal, in the, in the Himalayas, over 3,000 meters over sea level. But we could not explain the NGO without mentioning Mark. Mark Bosch Bruguera is the heart of the organization, also the co-founder and personal friend of mine. He was adopted uh, in Nepal 30 years ago by a Catalan family. He grew up in, in Spain, in Girona specifically, and after his studies in medicine, he decided that he would like to dedicate his life building up this exciting project, which is uh, Health as Nepal providing assistance to those people, to the neighbors, to the, the, his childhood friends, family. That's, that's the NGO, basically. The story of your organization is very much tied to Mark's personal story. Could you tell us a bit about how these two are so closely intertwined? By the time Mark arrived, my family was also looking, looking forward, waiting for a Nepal, Nepalese kid to come to our place. And this was my result of being my sister. After two years, uh, Mark arrived. Uh, my sister, Nona. Our families met together uh, just to share the experiences and to learn from them as we were sharing a common interest. Since then, we just became friends. We even lived together. Just, yeah, friends since over, ever. What does the current state of healthcare look like for Nepalese villages in the Himalayas? So basically, uh, healthcare is almost null in the area. Uh, there is one doctor, one official doctor from the government um, in the region, which uh, where lives around 60,000 people. Uh, however, this doctor keeps changing every six months approximately. Uh, which means there is no follow-up on the patients, there is no proficient way of dealing with the patients. Um, basically, it's because nobody wants to stay there and they, they, they ship, uh, they're shipped somewhere else as soon as they find another spot. About um, medication, uh, before us, there were some uh, uh, illegal pharmacies which were selling uh, meds like candies, with no, with no control, overpriced, and um, outdated. Also, uh, education and habits are inexistent. This means that uh, people is drinking water from everywhere. They just don't wash their hands. These like the really basic things which people is not aware. Uh, also provoke a lot of uh, diseases. Um, the treatments that can be performed are really basic. Uh, if you want for more complex uh, treatments, uh, you have to ship to ship the patients to Kathmandu, which is about between six and eight hundred euros. For these families, it's uh, it can be like the ruin uh, for the family. They have to sell properties or cattle or something like this. So it, it's it's really a problem. What are the areas of healthcare assistance that your organization currently focuses on? Our major areas of health assistance now it's focus on we focus on basic assistance and <clears throat> basic urgencies. We also uh, follow up and and, and give treatment uh, to to some uh, chronic diseases as well. Majorly in the area, 30% of of the diseases we treat are related to um, breathing problems. Um, Basically, it's, uh, there are chronic exposure to smoke that provokes a lot of problems uh, because people just burn stuff into their house. So they have no ventilation. So the fume, they just 
smoke all the time, let's say. <laughs> then the, there are all the infections. Then we have also with around 30% of digestive problems caused by water and um, food diseases. Another 10% are rheumatological diseases, 10% gynecology, and then 5-7% dermatology related and then trauma around 5%. These are the major areas we are focusing on, which is quite a lot range, a huge range. Can you talk about some of the progress that your organization has made since Mark made the pharmacy and health center? What we achieved so far, the progress we made, first of all, we universalized the access to medicines, which before was not um, easy, or basically there was no, no follow-up on treatments, and also there was no access to high-quality meds. Uh, also, we never give them for free, but if someone cannot afford, we just yeah, we just note it down and don't let them pay. So the basic thing is that they, and every, anyone who needs has access. Um, second, we are attending 35 people, persons per day. Uh, we treat more than 1,000 in the last year, 10,000. We also are providing some feature to local professionals. There were, uh, now we have two local guys hired and we plan to hire another two. Then last but not least, uh, Mark now is the reference doctor in the area. And anyone who has any trouble just calls him and he even walks to some remote villages and other people who can walk, uh, sometimes even walk up to two days to reach the center. So this means that we are already having impact in homeless people life. Could you talk about some of the upcoming projects or recent developments within your organization? I like this question. Next goal, next big goal, it's gonna be expanding the center. How we will do that? We are looking now for a new space to, uh, to create or to, to, to provide a better service. Now we are literally doing the uh, um, treating the patients in, in, our, in the warehouse, uh, in a small room uh, next to the pharmacy. But now we aim to have a proper space and one single space to treat the patients and also hiring a doctor, which will also help Mark in providing um, long day service. Um, moreover, we will acquire a couple of machines, RX and blood, blood test analysis, plus some monitoring uh, devices we need. All these will really enhance the level of treatment. In the end, we we're talking about basic things, but there's not even the basic there. So whatever we do, it's way far better uh, to what these people have. So that's, uh, we're talking really, really simple things, and we are going there. It's pretty achievable. It's going into a project of 20, 30K. Of course, we need more funds. We have some good savings, but this is the next goal. Then in long term, we would like to acquire um, plot and build our own center, but for the time being, we are not um, thinking about it. So just, we are step by step, we are establishing, building the team up, making the impact, creating awareness, and then we'll do the big step after when we settle down. So I know this is probably super far off into the future, but what does the end goal look like, or what is the mission accomplished point for your organization? Our dream? is that we are no longer needed. Um, basically, this is what Mark says, that maybe we can support a bit economically, but in the long run, we should, be, we should step out. I mean, our idea is that locals are able to, to do it by themselves. We have local professionals proficient enough to stay there. Uh, we will not, we'll need to find some agreement with the local authorities to maybe to, to receive funds, uh, but the idea is that we are, they are independent from us, so totally. 
it might take a while. But yeah, that's the that's the goal. What's the most rewarding aspect of what you do? Most rewarding aspect. It's basically seeing, looking at Mark and just seeing his strength, his resilience uh, to all he has to fight and suffer to achieve this goal. This is just so much rewarding, you know, for me. So all, all I do, it's nothing compared to what he sacrificed and it's been doing till now. Um, often he says, yeah, um, I'm just missing a hot shower. So we're talking about really basic things. And that makes me realize, yeah, how strong this guy has to be. And this is the most rewarding thing. Just, and my, my, with my little help, I kind of support him emotionally and also with my uh, project management, poor project management skills. But yeah, this is the most rewarding thing, just seeing him like this and the impact we, we can make to these people's life with really, really small effort. Okay, so let's wrap things up by telling people a few ways that they can get involved or learn more about your project. There are so many ways to help. First, economically. So there is a, we have, for example, one page, we are in one page, is teaming.net slash health as Nepal, where you can contribute up to, I think it's one euro per month. So it's a very small amount. You don't even notice in your account and you are providing, yeah, you're helping quite a lot. Second, um, spontaneous donation through our website. We have, we have the PayPal uh, donation online. You can also donate via credit card. Also bank transfer, e-bank transfer, and you can also be a um, regular member by giving a donation, like a couple of, of donations per year and you become a member. Also, another way, which is not less important, it's by volunteering. In Nepal, we cannot still get people there because, because of permissions, legal issues, legal issues, we are working on it. We expect to have it ready by the end of this year. So that could be a way if you're a health professional, especially. And second, also from here, there you can help us or organizing events, uh, some funding, crowdfunding, charity event, you know, that you would like to ask to be there. Anything's possible. So it just, we are open to any kind of help, to be honest. Also technical skills, we like to make some videos. We have lots of material, uh, also website, someone who helps us with the website. There's plenty of to do.